Greetings. It gives me great joy to announce Jesus Christ is risen. Praise be to him. And praise be his name forever and ever. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Listen to these words as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 11. As we hear the resurrection story as he shares it. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look on the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see them. Praise be to God for this, the hearing of his word. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. May your name be forever praised. Amen. The Easter message today is entitled, Just As He Said. Have you ever played freeze tag as a kid? Surely you remember that game. Somebody would be it, and everyone would be on the run, and the person who was it would chase you, and if they touched you, then you had to freeze. You were frozen in place. It was a great game, and part of the fun was catching people in the weirdest positions, in a position that they had a hold for as long as they needed to until someone came to unfreeze them. The game of freeze tag kind of reminds me of how life's moments are sometimes frozen in time. We think of the great events of our nation and world, and from one generation to the next, their remembrance of those moments are frozen in time. We can still remember when certain events happened and where we were in that day. Other events, both positive and negative, are frozen in time as too, as well. It might be your wedding day, or it might be the birth of each of your children. It could be the, the tragic death of a loved one, or the long farewell of saying goodbye. In any case, the good and the bad, they remain memories that are frozen in time for us forever. Today feels like a moment in time frozen forever. Here we are, staying at home, stuck in our homes, frozen there. And this whole world is frozen in time as this pandemic continues to rage around the world. We can see empty streets and we can see empty sidewalks because we are all frozen in time in this moment. Yet in the midst of this frozen moment in time when this pandemic has its grip on the world, this weekend there were two events that stand the test of time, that stand above any kind of moment in human history. The first is the cross towering over the wrecks of time. In the cross of Christ like glory, towering over the wrecks of time, the wrecks of war, the wrecks of famine, the wrecks of racism, the wrecks of ways in which we hurt each other, the wrecks of pandemics, and even the wreck of time of this pandemic. The cross of Christ in which I glory towers over them all. And yet that is mere prelude to this day, this day of resurrection, when those women came to the tomb, they had a conversation with the angel. The tomb was empty. And as they were headed back to the disciples, who comes and greets them but Jesus himself. This day of resurrection, this glorious resurrection of our Lord, 
is the most powerful event in all human history. It is celebrated each and every year from the time that it happened. And it comes with the great historical facts that reinforce its reality. We come today to celebrate not only the cross that towers over the wrecks of time, but also the resurrection that soars in triumph over the skies. As Mary and Martha came to the tomb, an angel met them. An angel had been there when Jesus was, was born, announced even before he was born. The angel was with him in Gethsemane, and now the angel was there again as he is resurrected. And the angel turns to Mary and Martha, and he says these words in verse 6. He is not here, he is risen, just as he said. Those, that phrase, just as he said, what did, the, what did the angel mean by that? What captures your imagination when you hear, just as he said? My one daughter-in-law, when she was a tiny tot, sneaked into the bathroom one day and grabbed a pair of scissors and looked in the mirror and having had her hair cut before, thought, I guess, that she could do it herself. And so she busied herself and cut away her bangs. Can you imagine how a little girl would do that and what it would look like? And then she saw the ponytail waving behind her and it was too tempting. She took that scissors and she chomped and chomped and chomped away until finally the entire ponytail was on the ground. Her long, beautiful hair was on the ground. When her mom discovered her, her mom was devastated. Her mom cried because her little girl's hair was, was so horrible. But that didn't bother the girl at all. She said, Mommy, don't worry. Daddy will fix it. Well, her daddy could fix a lot of things, but this is one thing that her daddy could not fix. He couldn't glue her hair back on. He couldn't make it miraculously grow. There's nothing that his, her daddy could do to fix it. When Jesus said, when the angel of the Lord said, just as he said, just as Jesus said, he was referring to all of that happened in Jesus' life. But even more than that, he was referring to that plan that God had before the beginning of time when Jesus was with him in heaven. The two of them were there with the Holy Spirit. And even then, before time began, there was a plan in place to fix the problem of our world and of our lives. Problems that we cannot fix ourselves. We cannot overcome our sin. We cannot reconcile with God. We cannot work through the evil of this world. We cannot overcome death. And it was in God's plan because of this foreknowledge of what we would be facing. It was in his plan from the beginning of, before the beginning of time to declare that Jesus would be born, to send his son into the world out of his great love for us, to let him live and die and then rise again so that the problem of our sin, the problem of our woes would be solved forever. Just as he said, refers to how much God loves us and the extent he would go in order to show that love and help fix the problem so that we could be with him in his kingdom forever. He isn't satisfied for so many years on earth. He isn't satisfied for a few moments here and a few moments there. The goal of our Lord and Savior and his Father in heaven is to have you and to have me with him forever in heaven after we die. He came so that we could experience that love and know that God's plan from the very beginning was made so that you could be in heaven with him. I wonder what the angel meant by just as he said. I think it means as well that he wants us to get it. He wants us to get what this resurrection is. You know, right after the resurrection, uh, after he's put in the tomb, before the resurrection, uh, the Pharisees and the chief uh, priests came to uh, Pilate and they talked with him. They said, you know, they, they talked about, uh, Jesus talked about being uh, 
risen again, being resurrected. I think we need to secure the tomb. I think we need to send guards so that it can be protected. They knew the power of this man. They knew the power of God. They were fearful of the resurrection. From the moment that he was placed in the tomb, they wanted to figure out a way to keep him there. Meanwhile, when he was resurrected, he met with Mary and Martha. One of the versions has Peter and John running to the tomb and looking inside the tomb. He came and he met with his disciples. And he continued to meet with them over and over and over again. He appeared to them over and over and over again. But they didn't get it. No, they, they went back to their old ways. They went back to their old life. The fishermen went back to the sea to fish again. Thomas, who was always questioning things, he continued to doubt. Peter, Peter felt despaired and defeated. The disciples were one hot mess, as we would say it. And Jesus knew that if they were ever going to get it, that he would have to work in their lives, work with them, visit them, care for them, drill it into them until they finally get it. Until they finally had their lives turned into the power that Jesus had in store for them. That's what God's desire was in Christ Jesus. And what Jesus wanted his disciples to do was to live on the resurrection side of the cross. He didn't want them to just be keeping the memory of his death, of his agony, of his suffering in their minds forever. You know, that's something we go through when a loved one dies. We walk, them with, walk with them through it, but then we have those feelings, those images much like the disciples had, the images of the cross. He didn't want that for the disciples. He doesn't want that for you. He doesn't want that for me. He wants us to live on the resurrection side of the cross. He wants us to claim the victory of Jesus Christ over death. He wants us to understand that he is alive again and that his power is in us. In 1 Peter 1, 3, it says, that we are born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. We are born anew to a living hope that is undefiled, that rests in heaven for us. We have this living hope, born again into this living hope, born to live life to the fullest on this life, in this life. This is what the angel meant when he said, just as he said. Because Jesus said that I want to give you life and give you life abundantly. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He didn't want us to live on this side of the cross. He wanted us to live on the resurrection side of the cross. To live in his power. To know his joy. And most importantly at all, of all, to live with the hope that we have in Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Oh, praise God for that. What did he mean by it? just as he said. I think it also meant that this event was not only life-changing, but world-changing. And that he wants everyone in the world to live it and to share it. He not only wants us to experience his love and know that it was a plan from the beginning of time so that we can live in his kingdom forever, but he also wants us to have that living hope that fills us with his power each day. And then he also finally wants us to live it and to share it with others. What a joy it was for the disciples as they moved from grimacing pain from the cross, filled with despair and hurt, to the power of the resurrection, to the grand joy of the hope they have in Jesus Christ. They became the most contagious people of that time. Wherever they went, lives were changed. Changed forever. Not only their destiny changed to heaven, but also their lives were changed because they began to have the power of Jesus Christ. He wants us to live on the resurrection side of the cross. He wants us to have a faith that is so filled 
that our lives will continue to live on her, here on earth with great joy and power, even into the future. I once uh, had a friend named Kurt. He was in my youth group some years ago. He was a vivacious kid. He was an energetic kid. He was a charismatic personality. He was just the hit of the town. He went on to play college ball, and I think Division Two, it might have been Division One, but I think Division Two. But he was a thousand-point scorer, and there at that campus, among his teammates and among his classmates, Kurt developed that same kind of of uh, fun and love that all his friends came to know him by. He was just simply loved because of the way he lived life every day. He was a young man filled with faith, a young man whose faith poured out into his life as he lived each day. He was engaged to Julie, and I met with them at a McDonald's, and we talked about their marriage and that was coming up and about what the ceremony would be like, and we were beginning to talk about uh, what it would be like to do the premarital counseling but as that time uh, happened, I, at the end of that time with them, I, I shared with, with them once more um, the love of Jesus and the fact that Jesus wanted them to have him in his heart and they wanted, he wanted them to know that they would be living with him forever, no matter what. I shared the gospel message with Kurt, who knew it well, and with his bride-to-be, Joel. The very night the next month that we were supposed to meet, Kurt and Julie were in a tragic accident and both lost their lives. In the days that ensued, hundreds of people flocked to be a part of that funeral service. It was a huge church and the church was packed to overflowing. So many had come from his campus in Virginia. So many had come from around the area who remembered him from high school and from church. And as part of that day, I held up a portrait that Kurt had made of himself. If you were able to examine this portrait, you would discover that Kurt's portrait wasn't complete. His portrait was unfinished. This is where our lives are here on earth. Our lives remain unfinished because our lives only are finished when we move into heaven and live eternally with the Lord. What God wants each and every one of us to do is to have that faith that Kurt had. That even though his portrait here on earth was unfinished, his portrait on this earth was filled with a contagious faith, with a joy that was contagious for everyone else whose personality overflowed with the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord wants for you and for me every moment of our days, every moment of our lives. He wants it to pour out in such a way and overflow in such a way that it becomes contagious to those around us. That sharing our faith is just simply a matter of living in the resurrection living in the hope that we have in him, living in the power that he has given us by the power of his Holy Spirit. The Lord wants us to live on the resurrection side of the cross. We live in tough times. And this moment feels like it's frozen in time. But what bursts forth on this scene? is the cross of Christ that towers over the wrecks of time, that reminds us that this, that this virus, this pandemic, is also healed, is also brought down, is also overcome by the power of the cross. What bursts on the sea in the midst of this frozen moment in time is the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comes to show us that the plan from the beginning of time was to show how much God loves you and how much God loves us all. So much so that he sent his son so that we one day would be with him forever. He sent his son so that we could get it, 
that it would be just as he said. We would experience his resurrection. He would come to visit us. We would come to have faith in him. We would have a relationship with him that would change our hearts, that we would live in the power and the hope of his resurrection each and every day, that we finally get it. And he would want us to be so filled with joy, to be so filled to overflowing with our faith that we just overflow with a contagious spirit of joy and love for everyone around us. It's been my life's mission when I am sitting with people near their death to talk to them one more time about the aspects of faith because I know the most important decision they could ever make and especially at that moment in life is to know that Jesus loves them and to accept him in their life so they could live with him forever. It's our mission as Christians to share that good news. Certainly you have loved ones that you want to have that faith, that you want to have that relationship with Jesus. There are neighbors and friends and co-workers and there will be people that you don't even know that by the living, the resurrection faith, you will touch their lives in such a way that they will begin a quest to discover Jesus for themselves. This is the day of resurrection. The day in which we recognize that the cross continues to tower over the wrecks of time. It hangs on our walls and the cross hangs from our necks. It hangs on the mountainsides and it hangs from the skyscrapers announcing to all the world that the cross of Jesus, his suffering and death, has overcome it all. It is also a day when the triumph of the resurrection soars above the skies with the great hope, realizing that our lives are living forever in our Father's hands. And that our lives can be lived each and every day with the full and the certain joy and hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Do you have that kind of contagious joy? Do you have the hope that Jesus Christ offers to you today? Are you celebrating the resurrection as one who lives on the resurrection side of the cross? and who lives to give glory and honor to God all the days of your life. For I know that that's why Jesus came. And that's why it all happened, just as he said. May this day of resurrection be a day of new life for you. Amen. I'd like to pray with us this morning. Pray together if you'll join me for that. Um, I'd like to uh, lift up a prayer um, for all to have. Let us pray together. Father God, we thank you that Jesus proclaimed he is the resurrection of the life. We thank you and praise you for that great gift that you have given him. Lord, you are our rock and our fortress and our deliverer. You are our God in whom we take refuge. You are the shield and the horn of our salvation, our stronghold. Give us your strength. Let us find refuge in, in you these days when time seems frozen. And let us continue to see you as our deliverer who brings us forth from this time in the, in the fullness of your grace. Father God, we pray that when your purposes are concealed, that we may continue to live on your promises. So many people are fearful today of what is going on and what their future holds, whether they'll have jobs when it comes back, whether they'll be able to pay their bills and have food on their table. Lord, when we can't see your pop promise, when we can't see your purposes, Lord, let us live on your promises because we know that all God's promises are yes in Jesus and that as we trust in him, he will see us through. So I pray, Lord, that you will be with those who are fearful and anxious, Lord. Help them to have their needs supplied. Help them to be 
able to share with their neighbors. Help them to have that faith in you, that trust that you will see them through. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the power over death and the power over sin through the cross and the crucifixion that you died for us. We also thank you for the resurrection that enables us to know that life will live forever for us who know you and that life, Lord, can be lived here on earth with joy and gladness because of you. So, Lord, give us that resurrection faith. Allow us to live each and every day with the joy of your presence. And in these times of anxiety, help us to be a source of comfort and peace, a source of, source of encouragement and hope to those around us, so that they may see how Christ is alive in us until they accept him for himself. Finally, Lord, we pray for those who are unsaved today, that they may choose to not only have faith in you, Rather than have that be a decision that is made, a policy, insurance policy that is signed in their heart, Lord, let it be something that grows in them. Help them to get the resurrection and to live with its power. For you are the God who deserves all the glory and honor and the power now and forevermore. Amen. God is so good. I trust that on this resurrection day, you will reach out in whatever way you can to loved ones, to let them know that you love them, to share the joy of this day with them, and to live this day with the peace and the comfort of Almighty God, for he offers you a hope that never disappoints. Now may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the mercy of Jesus Christ be with you now and always. Until we meet again.